<laughs> you too much Brad Phillips. Look at this. We've got the A10. Watch this. Thrust. Reverse. Check this out. Oh, it's so annoying. Do you hear the difference, guys? And then we also built in the pilot fatigue setting. So without further ado, we want to get some flights in. So we're going to try to rush this to get some takeoffs and landings. The wind is kind of coming crosswind. Throttle cuts off. We have regular forward. We have reverse thrust. Okay, so we'll just reverse it into position. That is so cool. And then we have pilot fatigue. So forward thrust, pilot fatigue. Okay, I don't wanna waste a bunch of energy showing it off. Throttle cut works for all three. We'll show you exactly how to set that up. Stay tuned. We talk about how to do it, not just, uh, we don't just say how to do it, but we show why to do it and how we did, why we did what we did so that you guys don't have to ask me in the comments because I won't remember. All right, throttle cuts off. Here we go, forward thrust. I'm gonna go back a little bit because I wanna get all the way to the end. That is so stinking cool, guys. Okay, here it goes. Oh yeah, out of the flaps, out of the gear, right over the power lines, full throttle. Oh, that is just absolutely fantastic. Out of the throttle all together. Here we go, full speed pass. Man, I was getting kicked around. Did you see the wind? Mm -hmm. I think it's windier than you. Oh, she's already made herself oh, a part geez. of our life. Goodness gracious. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right over the power lines. We've got our takeoff flaps on. A little bit of throttle. Okay, you good camera crew? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go gear coming out. Going over the vampire killing zone. Just a little bit of throttle into the landing flaps, really slowing it down, finding that low spot. Pilot fatigue. Wow. That was that awesome. Worked. That worked really good. That was so good. That was exactly what I wanted. Oh, and watch this, guys. This thing turns sharp enough. Look. Ah! Pilot fatigue setting. Pilot fatigue seven says <laughs> save me. Okay, so let's go look what I did here. Forward thrust is so much more efficient that it will go like right away, okay? So we're just gonna turn it around. The wind's kind of coming this way, so I could probably take off that way. You wanna take off this way? That's my timer. <laughs> Where do you want me to? Let's just do it this way, just cause we're gonna tempt fate, okay? Out of the throttle cut, make sure you're in forward thrust. Here we go. Look at that thing. Wow. That thing is a powerhouse, folks. That's with the wind, folks. Okay, here we go. Right over our shoulder, our left. Are you good? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be fairly tight. You good? Oh, that is so cool. Okay, hey, we're getting into a final if you want to kind of work your way slowly back. Yep. One more pass, actually. Awesome. Take off laps. Getting dirty with the landing gear. I'm in my spot. Okay, same spot you were, basically? Yep. Okay, going around. Okay, landing flaps are coming out now. Getting to the low point, a little bit of throttle, make it over the bump. Woo! Pilot fatigue, baby. Fly like you stole it. That was good. So, all I'm doing for pilot fatigue is that. That's it. That's why you need a pilot fatigue setting. Because by the time you come in here and land it, look at this, guys. This is 220, what did I say? 221 feet to the turn. Yeah, I think that's So like did. where the curve is happening here, from the edge of that concrete to there is like 221 feet, okay? So useful runway is more like uh, 200 feet, okay? Because we have berms of snow that are this tall. Yeah. So realistically, that is a short runway. And it's not very wide either. So the reason we show you this stuff is not to show off the skills that I have hard fought, hard fought to earn, to land in this area. But really what it is to show you that you can get this thing down in a tight spot. 
And then being able to reverse is just so cool and so much fun. And it is so loud and so exciting to listen to that noise. So Horizon, thank you for giving us thrust reverse finally. Can we do one more sorties? I, I want to check my voltages first, okay? Yeah, I was going to say. Got a twist, goodness gracious. I feel like I'm doing PPG all of a sudden. Oh yeah, we're going. Okay, takeoff laps. This is a short takeoff. Here we go. Oh yes! Wow. Out of the gear, out of the flaps. <laughs> that is so much fun! It was way too zoomed for that pass. Okay, you ready? Okay, yeah. full speed pass. <laughs> Guys, I don't think you realize just how fast so that fast. is. In person, it's uh, pretty intense. Okay, full landing flaps. In, in inverted state. Look at this, guys. Gear. Different approach. Different approach. Here we go. We're gonna stick it, guys. Woo! Pilot fatigue, baby. Yes. Okay. What you guys don't understand is that when I get excited like that, and you may understand this from past experience, that is 100% genuine botch landing that I just stuck because of thrust reverse. Why? Because I know, look, there's a cat. I know that even though I've used up uh, three quarters of my runway in glide slope and ground effect, I still put it down, no problem. Thrust reverse is the reason that we can do that. So Horizon, if you're listening, it'd be cool to be able to program it here. That being said, if you want it, we'll show you exactly how to do it. Yes, you do need the programming thingy. So we will link to the programming thingy in the video down below. We will show you the exact setup. We are Febrezing right now. Look at that. Mm -hmm. We got good voltage left, but I'm not going to do another pass because I know I'm not going to be able to res resist doing two to three high speed passes because this A10, it cruises. And by the way, when it's warmer, I hope to get second thoughts. This isn't even a second thoughts, folks. This is actually just how to do the reverse thrust because reverse thrust is huge. It is huge and you'll love it and you want it. So get it. By the way, this model is one of the best jets you can get from E-Flight. And I'm not just blowing smoke because we happen to be filming this. It's very cold. We're out here voluntarily filming this. I have double nitrite gloves on. Um, and so even with that pseudo reduced dexterity, I can get to my switches. I can do everything we just did. It's very easy if you do it right with your switches and we have full safety, okay? Throttle caught work still. So remember, when you're on the G switch, you just have to find the right spot. The G spot? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And so that way, when you're not looking at it, you can find the, the G spot. Yeah, you gotta be able to do it without looking. So there you go, guys. A10, Thunderbolt 2, 2, not 1. Not to be confused with one, this is two. Has the Avian 40 amp dual ESC, which is a single fixture. Six screws, slides out. We'll show you exactly how to do it. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look what we've got here. This is an ESC programmer V2 for Avian Firma or whatever that is. So I don't know. What we're going to do is we're going to open it up today. As you know, if you follow our channel much, we just reviewed this beautiful A10 Thunderbolt 2, which is the version two with smart technology built in, meaning there's a dual 40 amp ESC to run the dual EDFs, which is awesome. However, because of the way that the firmware is set up, we can't use the handy dandy avian screen that you would ordinarily scroll all the way to the left to program, even though we have enough channels to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna program reverse thrust today with this tool. So let's, let's go ahead and do it. I already know we have to get this open, so we're just gonna do it two millimeter hex drive. Well, I guess, yeah, you could call it a hex drive. 
We're just gonna get these screws loose and then it'll be ready when we get to that stage because we have to pull the Avian ESCs out. I can't remember if we showed that in the Unbox Build Radio setup. We were kind of debating about whether or not to show it. We got this tool maybe two or three days after we got the plane. We weren't sure that we were gonna be getting it. And so we went ahead with our release of the footage on Thursday. So you guys probably have already seen the Unbox Build Radio setup. If you haven't, uh, check our playlists. We have playlists for every single plane and we're actually working on a website too that's gonna make it even easier for you guys to find things like that that you're looking for. You can sort by plane, by manufacturer and all that good stuff. So we're coming out with that shortly. But for them, where did that screw go, Cam? I crew? heard it, but I was Well, hopefully it didn't go in the you. disposal. Should I just turn that on quick? I don't think, think it did. Not, I, didn't, I think we would have heard it fall in the sink. Yeah. So anyway, the way you do that is there's just six screws. If you want to like maybe point up here so they can actually see that. See, all six are off. And it's not hard at all. See now showing this. Your battery lead is going to yank back a little bit, but it's super easy to get it out. I mean, it's like we have done that once, full disclosure. Mm -hmm. um, we did it off camera because we weren't sure if we we're going to be able to do it. But so once this is out, then you get to these two little doohickeys. Okay. So it's like a little servo cable. This is the dual Avian 40 amp ESC, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause, find that screw, and then pick up where we left off. We found the screw. It's back in here. Okay, so let us know in the comments how the 4K has been working. Um, obviously, 4K is a little bit more memory for us, but it's otherwise not a lot more work. We've been using a new computer to do video editing, which for us means putting the files together when we pause a video or go to the bathroom or stop a video and then come back the next day. Uh, we pretty much do just live videos anyway. But just let us know in the comments below. We have finally worked out one detail we were getting wrong. Oh, and then mm -hmm. show them this. I don't know if they could see that. There's actually two oh, of yeah, those. Yeah, there's the second one. Okay, so now make sure you're showing the people actually what's going on too because this is where we plug it in, okay? Now underneath, on the bottom, there's an access hatch to get to the receiver right here. It's super easy to get to. Oh, yep. You don't need to get to that that we know of, okay? So one of the things about this A10 that makes it super, super good is that you can fit your battery in there and it's not like some daunting task, okay? Especially if you're using a 4000 Gen 2. This is a 4000. This happens to be a 50C. There is one time when I'm gonna recommend high C packs over low C packs, because typically 30 C is fine for most everything you're gonna do. 50, 100 C in this thing. I don't care what Horizon says. Get the higher C. Remember, they make money every time you buy one of these. So, buy the higher C, you'll thank me later. You'll probably still destroy them, full disclosure. Twin EDF jets are battery eaters. Just get used to it. Everyone I've had has always chewed through packs. Okay, so let's open this thing. Um, this came in just a regular brown box with a couple other items that were not related to this, so we didn't decide to open that all together. Normally we kind of show that whole process, but we had like a receiver for another plane that we haven't released yet. Uh, it's not an early release, it's just another plane that we haven't done, so we figured it's not really worth opening that. Mm -hmm. But this is how it came packaged. Horizon stuff always comes packaged really nicely. Sometimes it comes in like a retail bag, which I always thought was kind of funny. Um, okay, so we have the transmitter. I don't even know if we're gonna need it. But it looks like this. Oh shoot, we gotta cut that, don't we? So we're just showing you the entire process. I started by charging my battery for the airplane. It was at 99% because I am set to 120 hours, or excuse me, 240 hours automatic discharge time. And what that does for us is that after 240 hours, this battery will automatically discharge itself to the predetermined amount, which on Gen 2 packs is 3.9 volts DC, not 3.8, which is what we're accustomed to. Now, I think the reason they do that is so that if it overshoots slightly, we don't end up with a dead battery. Keep an eye on these things. The 4000s have been my most problematic cells. I don't know why that is. I don't have an explanation for it. If I do figure it out, I'm going to share it with you, okay? So obviously here on the channel, when you buy stuff from the links, you'll be supporting us. 
every time you buy something from one of the links, you pay the regular price, but we get a small commission from the company for having brought whatever access to it or just brought it to your attention. Looks like USB-C, ESC plug, battery plug. And then over here we have the battery checker. Oh, I didn't know this did battery oh. checker. Well, that's pretty sweet. So, oh, it does come with a USB a to USB-C connector. Okay, so obviously that USB-C, that must be for like updating the firmware on the firmware. And then of course it comes with a USB cable or not a USB cable. This is a Futaba, which is red, black and white. Um, just a regular servo cable to servo cable. It appears to be a standard one. Okay, so it's male to male. Well, it's actually technically female pins. So this is female. So it gets confusing because you have a socket that has pins and sometimes it gets confusing. There is a book in here and this book is an instruction manual. It talks about the weight and dimensions on the first page, it talks about what to do. I'm not even sure how this works, but what we're gonna do is we are going to, we are going to, oh, and then it's all a bunch of languages. So it looks like it's only about two or three pages of actual useful information. I don't know if I want to keep the packaging on this thing or not. Kind of depends on how it packs away. Oh, and then of course we've got a protective film here. You were thinking about not keeping the packaging? Yeah, I was, no, I was, I was thinking this might fit. It might fit, it might protect it. Oh. So I, I don't know if that's necessary. Yeah. So just to juxtapose this to the XBC battery checker, of course. Huh, battery checker has a USB micro. Mm. instead of USB-C. So this must have been designed after mm -hmm. the battery checker. So you'll note that there's no bounce lead on this battery because it's a Gen 2. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a Gen 1. This happens to be a 3200 6S, not that it matters, but you could fly it in this plane. I'm gonna plug in the balance lead here, just show you what this is all about. Okay, Horizon V2 battery voltage, 23. Okay, cool. So it's showing that, that's pretty sweet. I don't know how that is, if it's gonna give us all the smart uh, telemetry data and the like, or mm -hmm. if it's just gonna be basically, looks like it just shows. It just seems to be cycling through. Yeah, it's cycling on its own, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, so the buttons don't do anything when you're plugged into that. So then I'm just not sure if we can power it from that or if we have to somehow <clears throat> externally provide power <clears throat> or if we need to power the plane and then give us access in that manner. So I think what we're gonna try, ordinarily I wanna have my transmitter on to be able to control the plane so that we're not out of control and that's more of a safety issue, okay? So just gonna scroll down and pick the correct model select the model and then we'll walk back out throttle cuts on make sure the gear switch is in the correct condition so we don't have gear opening or closing on us now you've got enough lead to where that can be pulled out no problem and you're not going to yank the cable out of the actual receiver but in our case what i'm going to do is we were flying with it right about here so the strap the second strap back was actually about flush with it and that worked really nice for us Okay, so let's just go ahead and power it up. I'm not actually 100% sure if we even have to energize the plane, but then the BEC will energize. Um, well, we'll be getting power from this, and then the BEC is part of the electronic speed controller. So I'm assuming at this point we can go ahead and plug this in. Now, this cable is short, okay? There's a left and a right. I'm not sure how we're going to distinguish between the two, but besides just kind of remembering. And it uh, looks like on these ones, the negative is black. So negative needs to go toward the camera crew. So we're just gonna plug this in and see what happens. Oh, good, it turned on. Okay, so it comes up with Horizon V2. And then I don't know if you can select that, edit, save, select, connecting ESC. Now we should hear some beeping patterns. Just to be clear, my plane is working. Okay, look at that. Brake type disabled. I can edit that. Normal, proportional, reverse, disabled, proportional, reverse. So I'm gonna select that. Brake force, I don't know. 
surge switch, lipo, cells, auto calculate. <clears throat> cut off at 3.4, which by the way, I'm not a big fan of a, a battery cut off on the B, well, on a receiver, maybe. A smart receiver, maybe. But not on an ESC because I would rather kill a battery than lose a plane with the battery in it. So anyway, just continuing on. The BC voltage is at six volts. I didn't know that. Start time soft. Timing, who cares? Clockwise. Thrust reverse, channel seven. So we are currently on, let's look in our menu. I have it set to switch D. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, cool. So we're already on the right channel. So the big thing is, since there's two of them, we gotta be mindful that they're both attached to the same channel and that they both behave the same way. Now, being able to control two ESCs with thrust reverse is very exciting for me, but I don't know how fast it works because you could do some differential thrust with reverse thrust and that'd be cool. I'm just not sure how to do that yet. So we'll play with that later maybe. Um, differential thrust on this plane, by the way, would not make a tremendous amount of yaw control, but I have some ideas for um, twin prop planes that would be pretty sweet, like the twin otter. Okay, so thrust reverse, of course we don't have the, the double or the dual avian 40. Okay, so you could change that by hitting edit, see? So seven, okay, so that's the third option. So we'll just go ahead and select that. But note, channel eight, nine, five. Ooh, so we can do that with a standard transmitter. That's sweet. It used to be channel seven, eight, nine. So channel seven's already selected, noted by the asterisk. So we'll select that. Rudder reverse. What? Differential difference? I don't know. Restore defaults, no. Okay, cool, so I, I, I'm just gonna hit save. Okay, so now let's, let's unplug, and then let's plug into the other one. Remember, the black needs to go toward us. Okay, plug it in. Okay. So we'll just hit select. Connecting ESC, please wait. I mean, this is pretty simple. I didn't read instructions or anything. Mode one, avian, avian disabled. Okay, so we'll just do edit. Proportional reverse, select, brake force, I don't know. We'll find out. I don't want the brake force set to anything really. I don't want braking. The braking is going to prevent the spinning of the EDFs, okay? So, um, you know, imagine a sailplane that has a spinning prop. The brake is going to actively try to stop it so that the props fold back. I don't like the fact that brake is on in a prop plane because we've chosen to use reverse thrust. I like the tractoring effect because when a prop stops moving, then it becomes a lot less drag. There's still a lot of drag, but the thing is when a prop is moving, you're, you're to consider the entire plane like a plate or like a piece of plastic creating that much drag, which is so counterintuitive to me when I was a new pilot. I didn't believe it until I started using it. And when you come into land, a plane like the Draco, for instance, or the Beaver that we've set up with thrust reverse, or what else, the Carbon Z Cub 2.1, we have a prop that should be tractoring like this, creating a tremendous amount of drag to help slow down and mimic the reality of a real plane. But because reversing is turned on, you have that braking, so you have to give throttle at like, you know, five or seven or eight percent so that it keeps it tractoring. So um, note to self, if you're going at full speed in a plane and you break your throttle back to like 30%, that prop will actually be slowing you down. So it's gonna slow you down until the plane and the amount of thrust match. So it's just a strange, and I, I know some of you are gonna talk about that a little bit in the comments, that's fine. Um, you know, help back me up on that. <laughs> break force, zero. So select. I don't even know what that is. I don't care. Lipo cells auto calculate. Cut off 3.4. BC voltage six. And remember, these are all the settings that were in there. So you don't have to actually set it. 
show the people at home the, the blades on these so they can see. They are, and by the way, this is a live plane, so I should be careful about sticking my fingers in there. Um, and then this one's the same direction, right? Yes. You see they're the same? So they yep. both go the same direction. It would be sweet if they were counter-rotating, but there's hardly any torque loading. Um, no P factor created by that. Okay, and then channel seven. So we should be good there. So I think at this point, we just walk to the end. And then we hit save. Okay, now I think we got it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna just test this real quick. So just unplug this thing, uh, part number's here, but basically we're gonna link to this. You can buy one for your very own. They're not super expensive, but they're not free either. And I know some of you guys are gonna be irritated by that, um, as would I, um, because you just spent all this money on this plane and I don't wanna have to use this either. But for the moment, because we have this brand new piece of equipment that doesn't even have um, potential updated firmware or whatever, you're gonna have to just borrow one of these from a buddy, buy one for yourself. That was pretty easy. That was easy. I think it would've been easier in the transmitter. So obviously, as soon as we hear word that we're able to throw it into the transmitter like we used to be able to do, and for safety's sake, they're coming out of the factory without thrust reverse active, but it's so easy to start. And by the way, if you're working on the Draco or the uh, Carbon Z Cub, for instance, and you're like, why can't I find the reversing? Well, I can find it, but it never enters when I hold the sticks in the direction it says on the menus. That's because you have to do it within so many seconds of energizing the plane. Okay, so it takes maybe 10 seconds. All right, so we're gonna, puck, uh, we're gonna poke this thing back down in here just to be on the safe side. And um, it's super easy because look, all you gotta do is just kinda hang on to this drop this thing down in here. It's, it's, I was kind of amazed how easy it was to get that thing in and out. Mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna be a huge pain. Yeah. And I thought we were gonna damage a bunch of stuff doing it, like the finishes. We did have to, I think our paint kind of had a little bit stuck together. The first time when you did it, when we were checking it on the unbox, yeah. the paint kind of, you know, popped, popped apart. But Where did that screwdriver go? It's right here, I got it. So we're just gonna, just so it doesn't, you know, get away from me. I'm going to just tighten two of them real quick. Oh, before you test yeah, it. Yeah, because I mean, I'm on a plane stand, so we should be okay. Throttle cuts off. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to secure the plane with my hand in a safe spot. Okay, it never armed. Um, my throttle cuts on, it never armed. So I'm going to power cycle and then we'll try. Power off, power on. There we go. That's weird. What did I do different that caused it to not arm? Or is it just because? I don't think so. Oh, maybe because we went in the menu. Yeah. Elevator up, down, rudder, everything's working. Okay, throttle cuts now off. I'm securing the plane. That's forward thrust. That, that's weird. Did they switch directions? I'm gonna go down and idle. And I'm gonna, I could hear the difference. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah. That is so cool. But my G switch is in a weird position. So we're gonna talk about that after throttle cut has been considered. All the positions, the throttle cut still works. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Don't ever leave your stick like that. You end up chopping your fingers off. Which by the way, safety reminder, two things in this hobby get people hurt. And no, it's not hitting yourself in the head with your airplane. Although statistically, I'm sure some idiot has died running into themselves with a radio controlled airplane over the course of hundreds of years Probably. of exposure. Lipos, props, okay? Keep yourself as safe as you can. Lipos are um, one of the lesser stable chemistries within the battery world. Okay, so just know that, be careful, charge them on hard surfaces when you're around. And in terms of props, be careful. We show a lot of work with props installed. People give me trouble about it all the time. We do that because we know you guys wanna see what's going on. And I also realize that there is a certain risk versus reward to everything that you do in your adult life. I'm not talking to children, I'm talking to adults here. When you have a plane on a plane stand, and you choose to build it, if you put the prop on, you realize you're running a bit of a risk that you could cut your fingers. These screws are not purchasing. I don't understand why. So 
with EDFs, you're generally pretty safe. It feels like- It looks like it's- Oh, this side's place. going. This side's going great. Okay. But then this side just feels like it's idling. I just want to make sure I didn't catch a wire in between the foam hmm. or something. No, oh, nope, there it goes. I got it. It's biting now. You can tell because it's puckering the foam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we had that in-depth review on safety, just remember guys, safety is what you make of it. If you want to get hurt, do stupid things. If you want to do stupid things, you're probably eventually going to get hurt. Try not to do stupid things and you'll minimize the risk of getting hurt. Yes, people around you doing stupid things will also potentially get you hurt. So the company you keep will also um, help to mitigate or expose you to more risk. So anyway, that's all I had to say about that. We don't do a lot of nanny stuff on this channel because we respect you guys. Uh, we know most of you are adult men that go out and do things that are dangerous for a living. And uh, you're big boys, you can figure it out. And so, people don't always see all the behind the scenes right. between us. Yeah, like too, when I'm wearing my helmet, for the filming, like when we practice things <laughs> and other safety features. No, we don't do that. Just kidding. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how this is gonna work because we have switches now that we need to make assignments on. Right. So this is kind of an addendum video. We don't do a lot of addendums on unbox build radio setup uh, because we want you guys to have the, you know, the mother load when you first get your plane. Well, for us, this was kind of a little bit later. So we're just sharing it the way we experienced it. Okay, gear going up just in case it decides to take off in the living room. We're not doing that. <laughs> uh, throttle cuts off now. So let's talk about this. I'm gonna scroll to the monitor mode, which by the way, what the heck? Did I see the avian menu? What? That was so weird. I thought I saw the avian menu there. I didn't, it was in my head. Okay, monitor mode. We have a switch. It's called switch G. Zero, minus 100, zero, plus 100. Zero, show them from the side. There's zero, minus 100, zero, plus 100. So when referring in Spectrum world, meaning within the DSMX platform and Spectrum transmitters or radios, we have plus 100, minus 100, and we have zero, which is central on a three position switch, okay? So this happens to be G. It's, it's the G spot right here, right in the middle. So you want to get familiar with that. I'm glad you found learn, that. Learn to find that without looking because you may not be able to see where the G spot is. So anyway, put it in the middle, just kind of toggle it right to the middle and then give it some throttle and you'll see the strap is moving. Okay, I'm going to hold the plane so it doesn't like go off the stand. Ugh, that's so loud. Oh my goodness. Ugh. We, we had hearing protection on. You shouldn't we, put your helmet back on. That's right. Well, shh, secret, oh, super secret. Sorry. Okay, so throttle cut is off, or excuse me, throttle cut is off and we're in forward thrust now, except that we're not. Now That's the right. reason we're not, and I'm checking both, okay? Cause you gotta make sure you're checking both now. Yep. Cause if you have asymmetry and throttle, it's gonna do some crazy stuff, which might be kind of fun. So somebody share the videos when you do that. <laughs> okay, so now I have it going toward me and all of a sudden it's going the right direction, okay? It's trying to take off right now because it's like crazy powerful. Okay. That's Should crazy. I show them like blowing over the Christmas tree? <laughs> I mean, it is, I know you know, I need like to take it down. Gosh, almost people. three quarters of the way through November. Excuse me. January. Not November. It takes up no room. It does. It's, it's a pretty I tree I like too. the ambiance. So anyway, um, it's a lot of work to put it up. You don't want to put it up for like one week. Yeah. Okay. So this is the switch condition that we want to be, um, replicating for normal flight, so minus 100. Now, why am I showing it in this way? You know, some people have given us trouble about the way we show setting up this part of the radio setup because we want you to learn why, not just how to do it, okay? So that's why the video is five hours long, okay? If you don't like that, figure it out on your own. So check this out, click, scroll down to servo setup, and you can do this a couple of different ways, but obviously on channel uh, seven in our case, which is auxiliary two, we want this condition, okay? We want minus 100 to be when the switch is back here. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to just go to travel and then reverse that channel, okay? So now let's talk about what's gonna happen. So now we've reversed that channel. Oops, did I do that right? That's actually the flap channel? No, it's just auxiliary two. Yeah, okay. Okay, auxiliary two is interestingly enough, typically tied to switch B, which is what I use for flaps. Now the manual calls out D, we use D for smart or, or for safe, 
and AS three X and or safe AS three X safe off AS three X off. It just depends on the plane. Okay. So in this case, off safe is down here. AS three X is normal. Okay. So get used to where your switches are and what you want your switches to do and start to adapt that to every plane that you get. That way, when you're flying a carbon Z cub, it's not a carbon Z cub or a beaver. If you get a huge beaver, you know where the G spot is. So right here, right there, that's remember we flipped it. So now when this is toward me, instead of away from me, that's going to be forward thrust. So throttle cuts off. It's going forward. You can hear it's an appreciable yeah, difference in audio. For sure. Reverse. And still reverse. Okay. Throttle cuts on now for safety. Okay. So this or this creates reverse thrust proportional to where the stick is. Okay. What we have done in the past is we made this setting called the pilot fatigue setting. Now I didn't coin the term pilot fatigue, but I did coin it in regard to this from what I understand. And basically what I wanted was I wanted to switch that upon landing, I could quickly get to, I can quickly, and I'm not a pincer gripper. So I don't know if you guys are pincer grippers or if you're thumb grippers. I use thumbs, okay? The way they were supposed to be used. So all you pincer grippers can get all excited about that. I don't do this. I have it like this. I can get to that easily without looking, okay? I can get to that without looking. I can get to this without looking. I can get to that without looking and I don't. Okay. However, I cannot get to this. I cannot get to this. I have to take my hands off of the, con the controls to get to the eye switch. A lot of you suggest using a spring loaded button. If you're going to use a spring loaded button, just use one of these buttons because you can get to that. Okay. So you can use the back button. You can use the back button to reverse thrust if you want. When the back button is being held, you can make that reverse thrust, which would be pretty cool. We're not doing that here, okay? Just so you know. So what you can do is click, go into function list, go down to digital switch setup, and then you can set up what this switch is going to do. Okay, so switch G. Now, remember, we already reversed it, okay? So what more could we possibly need to do? Now we wanna make our pilot fatigue setting. Why do we need a pilot fatigue setting? Because when I pull that stick all the way back, I want full throttle right now only notwithstanding if we have the throttle cut on okay so if you're coming into land everybody's doing just fine you're flaring you're putting your flaps in you're really just struggling to kind of get it going down the road um, or uh, landing strip or whatever it is and you got all this stuff going through your mind it's just a really bad time to have to all of a sudden learn to flip your throttle all the way up which yeah. is weird now I want to be able to control it. Don't get me wrong. I want to be able to, you know, have full control if I'm back taxiing a little bit. Keep in mind, this might want to kind of squat onto its butt when you're backing up. And we'll show you that. Obviously, just like everything else, we'll have a demonstration of how this works at the beginning. So you've already seen it. Okay. So I want this condition to cause normal forward flight, which it does. Then I want this condition to be controllable reverse thrust. And then I want this condition to be, holy crap, what just happened? It's like going nuts, totally full force. Okay, throttle cut is also reachable. If you're able to hit this, you should be able to hit that, regardless of your stick position, okay? So you can either leave this at zero and leave this at minus 100, or you can set this to minus 100 as well. It's being goofy. See that, how it went to plus 100? Mm -hmm. My scroller's been weird ever since I took it out in the rain. Big surprise. Shocking. Actually, it didn't shock me. Okay, so minus 100. Now, why minus 100? Because technically, that's where your reverse thrust is supposed to work. Now, you can leave it at zero because um, there is a switch point somewhere in the range where it goes from I'm going forward to I'm no longer going forward and I'm going reverse. It's probably somewhere floating around zero. Remember, this is pulse width modulation. So pulse width modulation, there's a pulse and we're modulating the width of the pulse. Okay. So very big pulse, very small, very tight pulse. And that's what happens with a stick. And that's how you have analog feedback. You can actually move it a little or a lot. Hence proportional control. We can vary the pulse width. 
And then in response, the receiver over here says, okay, well, this, this is oscillating really fast. I need to go to that position. Or I'm oscillating really slow and we'll go to that position. Okay? So all we've done is we've made a digital switch to mimic different characteristics of pulse width modulation on that channel. Okay? So you see this? So there's position zero, position one, and position two are exactly the same. Now, what I want to do is that would just make sure that it's going to be full on controllable. Now, I'm going to jump into mixing and I'm going to mix one control, normal. And I want to mix with throttle cut on. I want to mix, uh, might as well use switch G because that's the switch. Where is G? Just have to scroll through. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Switch G to throttle. Mm, throttle is the first one. Okay, so now this is where I'm gonna pause for a second and say safety first, be careful. You now have a plane that can go forward or backward. Okay, don't like have it reverse thrust off to your stand into your kitchen counter um, or your, your island or your fridge or whatever it is, or maybe like if you have it in a shop, like whatever's on the shop wall. That would be bad because it's expensive and I want you to be able to fly this thing. Okay, or your kid or whatever, I don't know. So the rate plus or minus, and then there's an offset. And then you can set curve stuff, which is confusing. So we're just gonna set this and this is how I always do it. I don't know what one I need to change. I don't care, I don't wanna know why. I just change it until something happens. So this is where you're gonna be in reverse thrust. You only want this to be active in that position. So I'm gonna go down to switch and I'm gonna put it to switch G and I'm gonna put it only active on this position. And then I wanna deactivate it here and here. So it's only gonna be mixed there. So you actually put it in the switch condition you want and then you make your change. If you want it in the middle, go for the middle. I don't care, I would not recommend it. I would say all the way back, full thrust reverse and then in the middle gives you controllable thrust, okay? Yeah. Whoops, and now I scrolled accidentally into a different switch. With Spectrum, you can just do it that way. Now I've unclicked that and I can go back up. You'll note that it also says curve two. See how it says curve one, curve zero, okay? So I wanna make it only active there. And I wanna deactivate it there and deactivate it there. Do you see how I did that? So now there's nothing. It makes no impact, there is no mix. Now there's a mix, now there's no mix. Now there's a mix. Now there's no mix. And you'll note that that changes too because it's actually a switch as well. So is this all, there's layers of controls happening here. You've got the digital switch layer. You've got the, we already reversed the output of auxiliary two, which is the seventh channel. We also have over here, we have that the ESC left and right are both respondent to thrust forward or thrust minus based on the negative 100 or the plus 100 on this channel. Okay, so this is all happening. We're just building blocks until we get to the full thrust reverse with pilot fatigue. Why do we fatigue ourselves so bad for this pilot fatigue? Because when you're flying and landing, that's when you need to not be thinking about this crap. Make it second nature, make it easy. Make it one button, I don't care. If you like the one button, go for it, okay? I'm just not gonna teach you how to do it because I don't think it's the right way. Okay, so over here, so we'll put that into the switch condition that it's gonna be active. Now we just need to do a test. Now we're gonna look over at throttle, but note that, watch what happens when, I'm, when I have a throttle cut on. You can't see what's going on. See, that's annoying. Okay, so there's two ways you can play this. The safest way is throttle stick down, throttle cut off. Okay, now it's gonna work. Throttle's working. That's why you gotta be careful doing this with prop planes. I'm in the reverse setting. And it's, it's going forward, so that's not right. See, it's going forward. There, it goes back, okay? So, coming back to this. So I'm in thrust reverse. Yeah, it's definitely sucking air, and it's blowing air at us, okay? So what do I want to do? I want to go down here to the rate and go until it starts running. See how it's not running? It's because it's, it's not the right direction. Now I can either do that or I can go negative. 
See, it's not changing it. So that's obviously not the side we wanna be on. This is the side. See how it's going down? That's not what we want, we want it to go up. See how it's starting? See how it's going up as I scroll and it goes down when I don't? That's not because I'm moving the throttle stick, it's because I'm mixing the control. Okay, so we're gonna secure the plane. Come over here. We're gonna put the throttle cut on. We know we wanna keep going negative. Throttle cut's now on. We're just gonna scroll this all the way up. Ah, see how it's doing that? That's so annoying. I need to probably take this out and clean it. Put some dielectric grease. Okay, so this is gonna get loud. I'm gonna go all the way to minus 125, which you probably could do minus 100. This is where it's gonna be loud, so are you good for a minute? I'm running. Okay, it's gonna be very loud. Throttle cut's on right now. I'm gonna put it into regular controllable thrust reverse. Throttle cut's off. Controllable and reversing. Off. Pilot fatigue's gonna look like this. Okay, now, guys, come look at the screen. I want you to pay attention to where the throttle is. I've got everything under control here. That's only 27% throttle. Why is it only 27% throttle? Throttle cuts on, by the way. That's because we have, we would have to be using an offset too. Okay, because I set it to minus 100, remember? Mm. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll actually go back into digital switch setup and I'm gonna just uh, select with the switch. Now this is the one where it's minus 100. I'm curious if we can put this to like some other value. Let's see what happens, okay? So now throttle cuts off, controllable. Now should be crazy. See, nothing. You wanna know why? Because we're still not in reverse thrust, okay? Mm. So throttle cuts back on. So we learned something, everybody learned something together. I'm gonna scroll that back to minus 100. That guarantees we're in reverse. Now I'm gonna walk back down to mixing. I'm gonna go to our single mix. You see how it's off, off, or on. My throttle cut is on. Now I need to set my offset. I believe it's gonna be a minus offset. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just go ahead and do this real quick. Okay, listen, throttle cut's going off. See how it went to 10 instead of 26? So we want the offset to be a positive value. Okay, now watch this. Throttle cuts off. Whoa, that's wow. loud. <laughs> okay, so I think the offset's gonna need to be like 50. Now watch this number. I want that to be plus 100 for throttle. So we just need a little bit more offset. And we could set this to 100 and then set this to 100. Okay, minus 100 rather. I don't know if you guys can tell what I'm doing. I'm just using absolute values to figure this out. There's a change when you scroll until you get it right and then you're done. Okay. That is so loud. Is oh my goodness. Okay, so in controllable mode, control. Forward flight mode, reverse controllable. Pilot fatigue, throttle cut for any of the three settings, protects you. Okay, so in closing, throttle cuts on. Minus 100 here, offsets 100. Digital switch setting will look like this. For G, position zero all the way back is what I want to be forward flight. Then reversing and reversing. Reversing controllable and then reversing with pilot fatigue full bore. Okay, then servo setup, we did a reverse on auxiliary two. So hopefully that gets you guys exactly where you wanna be, which is unfortunately having to buy this to get this beauty doing thrust reverse like you'd like. But let's go ahead and do a little taxi. Obviously we're gonna fly this thing for you. There's no doubt it's gonna be flown. So let's open the gear, which if I haven't mentioned it, the gear are awesome. Also look at those squares, those landing gear doors, Megan. See the landing gear doors on all three gear? Somebody asked me, why do you, why do you cycle your gear? Why do you clean up the plane? You know, clean versus dirty with the mm -hmm. gear down. 
when you're doing your go arounds? You know, why waste the power? Because there's so much drag that's created by those three gear door. And also with the flaps, I come out of the flaps too, but I always wait on that. I come out of my, my full landing flaps and then I go into my takeoff flaps and then you make sure you get your speed back up. You may not be going for a very fast go around, okay? Mm. So first things first, throttle cuts off, sticks down. If I was in pilot fatigue, that thing would be flying back into the couch, okay? I'm in controllable mode. Evidently our carpet is very thick. Look at that, like 10% throttle here. That's crazy. Do we have enough room to get by this? Um... Look how bright that light is, that is so cool. Okay, I'm going in thrust reverse. That's about 60% to sustain and about 90 to 100% to get it started in the carpet. Mm. So let's show the people a shot of the throttle sticks. And uh, you can imagine what it'd be like if I had the battery in there, right? Okay, throttle cut is off. You can see because it's away from me. Forward thrust. Look how little. I've got 17, 17%. And absolutely no problem. Very quiet. Now, same thing in thrust reverse controllable. And then pilot fatigue. Out of pilot fatigue controllable. So, as you can see, everything works, throttle cuts on. This is why you keep your switches in a standard configuration when you get ready to take off. That's why I go through all the trouble to get this knob in the middle and all the rest of the knobs where they need to be when I'm starting up a plane. You can also build in a warning for each and every one of those switches to make sure that you're centered at the beginning of a flight. I would never do that, just know it. Make it part of your regular routine. It becomes second nature at that point. This plane's awesome. It's gonna be even more awesome with thrust reverse. I kind of fail to see how a plane would not be more awesome with thrust reverse. And I'm sure that one example of a plane that people might not like thrust reverse on would be a prop driven plane that has pitch control for thrust reverse. And I know that people are gonna give trouble like on the Draco, because the Draco doesn't spin its prop the other way to produce thrust. Well, it doesn't do anything now. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's still really cool because to have um, pitch control on our props and radio controlled is just something that we don't do in this size class. There are people that have done it, and yes, you can actually get uh, pitch controlled props, but to be Frank with you, I would just rather have the ESC do it. It's, it's no moving parts, it's much simpler. Um, you already have a, you know, a bell housing that's designed to spin, you've got bearings involved. Everything is simple, it just does its thing. You got your brushless motors. Um, obviously a thrust reverse is not generally gonna work on a brushed motor um, because if you spin the motor the other way, I believe the brushes might get caught, I'm, I'm not sure. But it just depends on the motor. So. All things considered, awesome plane. Thank you, Horizon, for giving us this opportunity. Horizon, please give us the opportunity on our transmitter that's super expensive, that's awesome, that we love, and we keep buying. So we'll be looking forward to that, and as soon as it comes out, we'll share it with you. First, on Brian Phillips RC, if you have questions about this, rewind the video, watch it again. I promise you, we show every single step on how to set up thrust reverse in this plane with the pilot fatigue setting. Also, hopefully you like the flights. Hopefully we didn't crash and destroy this thing. But even if we did, you probably learned something from it. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you guys wanna help support our channel, if you want to upgrade your existing E-Flight V1, or I think they call it the E-Flight A10 Thunderbolt 1, you can purchase that um, Avian ESC with the twin receipt with the twin 40 amp ESC. You can do that. Uh, just follow the links in the video description below. Just go to the master link, find what you're looking for. You'll be supporting us in that way. Also the AR637TA is what they put in this. You could get it with the AR637T or the AR631. 
I would go for a 631. I wouldn't do a 630 in this model because I would like the antenna uh, because there's a lot going on in that specific area where the receiver is. Now, why do you have to do both? Because the smart ESCs are going to call for a smart receiver. And yes, you may have to update your firmware to get the ability to do what you want to do, but you probably won't need that to set up the thrust reverse. It just depends on when you buy it. So if you're watching this video in 2023, you may already have that available right from the screen on your transmitter. So without further ado guys, Brian Phillips RC is here for you for all your RC needs. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I've been doing a bad job of keeping up, but I am trying to keep up. So leave your questions there. Obviously we thank you so much for your support, your continued support, the 4K, uh, the new computer for doing video editing. And then of course the recent addition of PPG onto the channel is going to be, um, uh, it's all thanks to you guys being here. So we really appreciate that. And we had another great year in 2021. So even though the world was like tripping all over itself, doing stupid things, um, we were here really enjoying it and hopefully you were too. So thanks for being here. So much more to come. Stay tuned, leave your comments, questions in the um, comments below. And then also don't forget we have the Patreon and PayPal. Thanks Patreons uh, for supporting us and our family the way you do. We really are honored. And also we've had a few people that have done PayPal gifts, which mm -hmm. is just like really um, super cool. Some, some of them have been kind of big. So thank you guys, you know who you are. And um, I won't mention names unless you ask me to. But uh, this plane is great. If you're thinking, I want that plane, would I recommend it? Yes. This is definitely one of the best E-Flight jets. And there are a lot of them, okay? This is one of the best. Is it my favorite jet? Guess what, no. My favorite jet is still the F-16 80 millimeter. <laughs> and when they make a 90 millimeter F-16, it's probably gonna be my favorite just because of my personal preferences. However, this is probably one of my second favorite. The reason it's my second favorite is because it flies so freaking good it's easier to put the battery in than most jets. Also, I love the thrust reverse. The thrust reverse just really makes it, it just adds a new element of excitement. Also, this plane takes off and lands very well, and it has a very wide flight envelope. Over 100, and, I think it's about 110 miles an hour, uh, full speed, level flight. I mean, downhill, you go even faster. Um, but it will fly slow with full flap deployment. So those are all things that we love. By the way, we have a cat that's scraping at the garage door, so we have to let it in. And with that, we'll leave you. Stay tuned, so much more to come. Thanks for watching.